all right youtube this detroit's hp tv coming to you out of detroit in this story we're going to talk about r kelly aaron hall p diddy uncle luke jody says a few more and they click now i know there's been a lot of stories about puffy selling what's going on with that case but it's like they say, the internet is undefeated. And I want to show you some things, and I want to show you who next and why they next. And you got to be careful in front of these cameras because what you say is going to be around for a long time. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you several videos. Now, in one video, Gloria Valera says she met Aaron Hall when she was 16. Now, listen what Aaron Hall say about the day he met her. Oh, wow. She's been looking for an insight in that data forever. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm going to find it. Did you tell her about this type of display of masculinity, if you can call it that? Another. Hurry and save on your active faves, like Nike gear for 25% off, now at Kohl's. There are things in life that aren't easily defined. I can use yeah. to see a puffy when any of them just, yeah. they've been at my house, they all see me <laughs> Aaron Hall is a name that many 90s kids remember, and like many singers, Aaron has had his fair share of controversies. Given his explosive temperament, Hall was making Hold on, this is for fair usage. Under the 1976 Copyright Act, the YouTube agreements is for commentary and educational purposes. And it's going to be educational to watch. Headlines quite often, and not in a good way. I took her! Me and Gloria's cool. I'm a boss. I ain't going to argue with you about no s***. And you and Billy who called bitch. Despite his musical talents, Aaron is most known as the R. Kelly number 2, if you know what I mean. His name frequently found itself entangled in discussions surrounding high-profile scandalous affairs, overshadowing his musical prowess with the shadows of controversy. I was actually in the studio when he recorded that. You we just started dating. You are loud. I swear to God, I was 16. In his latest interview, the I Miss You sing. Okay. Now, you see Gloria Velez. She just stated that by the time she actually recorded a song with him, she was 16. She had just turned 16 when she actually recorded with him. So listen how they first met. Singer recounted his cringy endeavors, inadvertently revealing his true association with Puff Daddy. Let's delve into the chilling intricacies of Aaron's career that will unveil some truly disturbing secrets of the entertainment industry. The Caribbean-American singer Aaron Hall has become the center of attention following his explosive interview with DJ Vlad. During this session, Aaron seized the opportunity to boast about his prowess in the bedroom, boldly asserting that there was no B who didn't desire to engage in intimate encounters with him. A whole lot of girls out there with them billow who caused them young 1970s, 1980s bitches. Yeah. You know what I mean? They try to go up there with the, you know, with the fresh out the pussy shit. As the interview progressed, Hall's claims got progressively worse. He had the galls to claim that his privates were worshipped by the female population. Everybody know my son's mother. Everybody know that shit. As cringy as it is to listen, it is important to remember that Aaron had been unashamedly obnoxious since the beginning. In his bedroom godlike speech, he dropped a bomb that shook the entire industry. You see, Aaron alluded that he and Diddy have a very close relationship, to the point that he would often take the girls right in front of him. Yeah. I like for them to see how I f like you used to yeah. the see a puffy or not any of them yeah. They've been at my house. They all see me f they all know I'm a big Indeed, it has been widely whispered that Diddy has been hosting adult-oriented gatherings for an extended period. Given Aaron Hall's unabashed claims, it... Now, we gonna, we gonna dissect what Aaron Hall is saying. Aaron Hall is saying that everybody knows that he got a big D. You can ask Puffy, you can ask Jodeci, 
you know, you can ask them guys because he has sex in front of them. You know what I mean? They see. But look how incriminating he said. Now, you know, Gloria Velez is his son's mother. Now, you see, she just said that, that they made their first record when she was 16. He finna tell you what happened on the first day they met. It certainly raises the intriguing possibility that he may have been a frequent attendee at such events. Moreover, after listening to Aaron, you might have already realized that he is actually very much of a S fanatic. Now with a mindset like that, it is no wonder why Aaron's name comes up in many essay scandals. So I just went there and just grabbed her hand and went inside the hotel and yeah. gave it to her. You feel me? It might shock you to know that Aaron does not believe in dating and pursuing women. He has openly admitted that he assesses a woman's value by the fact if she can satisfy him and better not. A whole lot of niggas write about taking girls out to shop, taking girls to fly to Dubai and all that shit. Close your eyes, we anywhere. Fans believe that Aaron is the textbook example of toxic masculinity. One of them commented, what in the entire F did he say? What man in his right mind admits to two other dudes witnessing him have S? As a black woman who happens to be a mother to a 23-year-old son, I'm embarrassed and ashamed by this type of display of masculinity, if you can call it that. Another pointed out that his derogatory language has effectively eliminated any respect the fans had for him. Listening to this was very disturbing. I really had fond memories of him in the group guy and the times that they appeared on bet with Donnie Simpson. At that time, he stuttered a lot, so maybe it's to cover up the impediment. I also agree. 30 years of the respect I had for him thrown away in 2 minutes and 48 seconds. The plot takes a sickening turn as Aaron proudly announces that he'd had his way with Gloria Velaz without much consent. However, what makes this revelation even more disturbing is the presence of prominent figures like Fat Joe and other influential names at the scene who seemingly stood by and did nothing to protect Velaz. Aaron boasted that she had just started dating a Jamaican rapper. Do this every morning to clear stuck mucus from lungs and breathe easy all day long. Short or weak breathing is easy to blame on the lungs, but that's not the whole story. The lungs are part of the solution, not the root cause. The main culprit behind short and weak breathing is the sticky, thick mucus coating the airways. This mucus acts like a barrier that blocks the oxygen from reaching the lungs. It also harbors pollution, smoke and toxins. But once he laid eyes on her, he took her by the arm and had his way with her for, quote, days to come. Big pun, Fat Joe, Method Man, like, like whoever you speak to, just ask them how I did it. I got out the limo, grabbed the hand, went upstairs and f***ed her. Paul excused his behavior by saying that he and Gloria are cool. It is rather disgusting to hear Aaron parade around. Now what's crazy about this situation with Aaron Hall is he's saying he just grabbed her hand and took her now. When he first met her, by the time they actually made a song together, she had just turned sixteen. This is why they. This is why they finna be caught up. This is why they finna be caught up. Look what they saying out their own mouth. Look how they telling on each other, and they and they telling it to Vlad. They worse than the rappers. They're going there and admit to crimes in front of Vlad. But these guys deserve it. Listen to them talk. explaining his deranged acts as trophies. You can clearly hear how proud he is about the things he has done. I took her! Me and Gloria's cool. We got cool in two weeks. You feel me? I'm a boss. I ain't gonna argue with you about no sh You and Bill who called bitch. To bring things into perspective, you should know that when this all happened, Gloria was only 16 years old, barely a teenager. In a separate interview, Gloria dished the details. She said, Aaron Hall. I was actually in the studio when he recorded that. We just started dating. You are not. I swear to God, I was 16. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot different. Later on, the Bronx-born musician stated that he didn't even say anything to Gloria to entice her to come upstairs with him since he had a speech impediment at the time. He explained that every guy was after her at the time, but so many were afraid to actually approach her, which is why he stepped to her full of confidence and swiftly took her to his room. Three days after their encounter, Aaron recalled Gloria getting air. Everybody else was scared to approach her and scared to touch her because she was a minor. Let's continue. 
Aaron's tattooed right above her private part. He stated that he has nothing but love for her despite their drama-filled past, due to the fact that she gave birth to his son. The biggest takeaway from this incident was that Paul had the tendency to manipulate underage girls into being obsessed with him. And Gloria had tattooed Aaron's right above In her. black, red, and green. Right above her vagina. Right above it with a, with a parenthesis with an S. Right. Aaron's. Aaron's. You might be thinking, why was Hall not held accountable for his misconduct? Well, in the very next second, Aaron claimed that he was not aware of Velaz's age at the time. If you ask us, it is quite apparent that Hall added this part so that he wouldn't get in trouble later. Gloria didn't do no bad thing to me. I thought she was older. You feel what I'm saying? Sometimes I see a puppy on the field when I'm doing dog training. I think it's a year old or two years old, and it'd be like eight months. So I don't know. Although Aaron was able to escape the consequences of his action in Velaz's case, karma soon caught him when he allegedly raised his hands to hurt one of his ex-girlfriends. Back in 1996, Hall pleaded guilty to attacking his ex-girlfriend and was sentenced to five years of probation. A few years later, he was ordered to undergo two years of anger management training, but when he failed to show up for one of the sessions, with Aaron claiming he was delayed while traveling to witness the birth of his son, he wound up serving 11 months in Rikers Island. After the incident hit the mainstream media, Gloria took the opportunity to speak up against the injustice she had unknowingly faced in her formative years. She called Aaron out for being a deranged creep for having a relationship with her in her teen years. On top of that, Velaz clapped back, accusing him of hurting her and labeling him as a deadbeat dad who has never contributed to the care of their child. She said, quote, Aaron was abusive toward me, and I'll be damned if I'll put my son through that. There were days I couldn't go outside. I was so beat up he can get lawyers involved. Paul, of course, has denied the abuse and says all attempts at child support were turned down. He claimed that Velez wanted to keep his son away from him. I seen the DVDs and everything. I haven't seen my son in six years. Why would I not want to see my son Aaron? My first son died. That's why I did the video, I miss you. I haven't seen Aaron the fourth in six years. Let me see my son. I walked up to Jay-Z, Ja Rule, I'm the realest you'll ever meet, and said, why don't you tell Gloria to let me see my son? In the wake of Gloria's accusations, another name was added to Hall's essay list. The word on now <clears throat> in another video, I'm gonna show you why he mentioned Jay Z and and went to Jay Z and asked Jay Z to ask could he see his son. Now, like the guy who doing his commentary at the end after he had said all that. He admitted to saying, I didn't know how old she was at the time. You shouldn't even be talking about it in this manner. You, you know what I mean? Because ignorance of the law does not abhor you from it. You didn't ask her how old she was. You said nobody else had the confidence to step to her because everybody else knew she was a minor, man. Come on now. Let's go. The street claims that Patra exited the music industry after Hall had allegedly violated her. Although nothing has been proven, the majority of the public holds the rumor to be true. In an interview with Vibe magazine, she alluded that she took a long break from music because she went through something traumatic. She said, quote, Yeah, what happened was I was taking a break to get my career on track. It's very simple. I just wanted to be in control, finish my education, and just to be happy. That's basically it. There's nothing really... How does the best basketball player of all time make more money in his retirement? Dramatic to discuss. I just needed to take that break to get myself and things together in order to be in control of my own business. To me, that is the most refreshing thing I was able to accomplish from my absence from the scene, is to be in control of my stuff. Some conspiracy theorists suggest that Aaron may have forced himself upon her, and when she allegedly refused, Aaron got violent with her. Quote, it astounds me the number of abusive R&B cats we've heard about over the years. Brian McKnight, Joe, Aaron Hall, R. Kelly, Chris Brown, anyone else? How do you go from singing about making love and worshipping a woman's body to punching a woman square in her eye? Then again, it makes good sense. They probably learned to perfect their craft by singing love tunes to women after they just finished whooping their ass. Over the years, people have pointed out that Aaron had always been a jerk when it came to women. You see, most of his songs portray his pleasure when he violently dominates his muse. It won't be wrong to say that Aaron essentially glorified S.A. One of his hit songs, Don't Be Afraid, is the embodiment of questionable narration. 
The lyrics of the song read, quote, No need to run and no need to hide. All the doors are locked, baby, and I have you inside. You can yell and you can hit me. It just makes me more horny. End quote. Someone needs to call the authorities because it seems like there is a beast on the loose. In the past, it used to be every teenager's favorite song. It simply shows how cleverly the music industry incorporates twisted concepts into our culture by using beats as crutches. If you think about it, these songs desensitize the people and inadvertently normalize inhumane crimes. Our culture includes jokes, TV, music, advertising, legal jargon, laws, words, and imagery that makes violence against women and S coercion seem so normal that people believe that R is inevitable. Rather than reviewing the culture of R as a problem to change, people in a R culture think about the persistence of R as just the way things are." End quote. The point is that violence against women has long been normalized in society. This culture breeds beasts like Hall who are a menace to society in more ways than one. Coming back to the song Don't Be Afraid was an R-rated catchy tune that you could dance to. Okay, y'all can research and find more on this. That's enough. You can see why Aaron Hall is on deck now. You know what I mean? You see how he brags about his thing with Puffy. See, I know Puffy got to be cringing at this moment, like because you know Puffy don't do no interviews. Puffy don't let you talk about his bedroom antics. He stopped that because he already know he's not trying to go down that rabbit hole. But Aaron. He told on himself. That's why he up next. Now, why I say Luke is next? Check out, check out, check out, check out how Luke, check, check out what Luke snitches on. Now, we all know that we just found out that when Aaron met Gloria, she was a minor, barely 16, if she was 16 yet. So he already admitted to that. Now, when you bring somebody across state lines for the purpose of that, it's called trafficking. Understand what I'm saying? Now, where does the trafficking come in? Watch how these guys snitch on themselves. The internet is a beast. I'm telling you, be careful what you be saying on here. Cause watch what watch what Luke say. Fine, let's find what Luke got, what Luke got to say. And what you see what they really arguing about as it relates to it. Okay, here's Luke. It go down in the field. The fan duel every night is a watch party. Now we now remember, Luke is finna say something that he should have never said, considering what they were doing and what's gonna come out. Luke, Luke, so arrogant. I'm just gonna let you see it for yourself. For fair use, his commentary, 1976, copyright that. Check out your boy Luke, Uncle Luke. <laughs> How did you meet up with Aaron Hall initially? Oh, uh, I, uh, I was doing this show called Luke's, uh, the Peep Show, and I on a station that BET owned, which is called Action Pay Per View. I owned a show on there, and I I was shooting, so I interviewed him. You know, I was interviewing all kind of artists, you name it: Biggie Smalls, Lil Kim, Tupac, Suge Knight. You know, we I I did. I interviewed all these different people for the show, and uh, I eventually interviewed uh, Aaron Hall for the show. That's how I pretty much met up with him. Okay, so I remember there was a something you had put out a while back. It seemed like it was like an audio book of some sort where you just talk about different stories that, that you went through, and and one of the stories that stood out to me was the Aaron Hall and Gloria Velez story so I, I brought the story up to aaron hall whoever you speak to just yeah. ask them how i did it i got out the limo grabbed the hand went upstairs and fucked her luke didn't never fucking introduce me to anybody okay in his life i love luke to death mm -hmm. he just but, had on but can up. nobody look the reason why he's saying he introduced me to it because it's a good thing to say okay i introduced aaron hall to this yeah, girl that is i took girl. her what do you think about all that 
I think the best thing you could do is ask uh, Gloria Velez, who who introduced who to who, and how did that happen? Uh, and at what period of time was she a dancer? Uh, in in uh, in uh, in my group. Uh, at that period of time, she was a dancer, and uh, I would get all these phone calls from her uh, when she was staying with us. You, the best thing for you to do is uh, ask her, how did she meet him? You know, I, I ain't getting into no issue uh, with him. Uh, the, when I met him, he was on the set of The Peep Show, and I mentioned, you know, I, I was interviewing him, and I mentioned... You know, hey, look, uh, R. Kelly is more freaky than you. And then he said, no, R. Kelly ain't more freaky than me. And he began to uh, eat a girl's ass out on the camera. So if he wants to deny that, there's plenty footage of that as well. Uh, and uh, at that period of time, his record label then started calling up saying, please don't show that. Please don't put that out because he was getting ready to put an album out. And so uh, the best person to answer that. Okay, YouTube. Y'all following what I'm showing y'all. He wants to take credit for having her first. With him in Miami. Not realizing that she had just turned 16 by the time she actually met Aaron Hall. So what is he really admitting to? Think about what Luke is saying. He next, watch. It would be Gloria Velez because at that period of time, she was a dancer for me. She uh, started okay. dancing. She was originally a dancer for DJ Laz. Then she started dancing for me and touring with me and uh uh she started doing videos we started hooking up with videos from jay-z to you name it uh because she was a better very beautiful girl and uh so they snitching on jigger remember the first video i showed you where aaron hall said he had to contact jay-z and ask him about seeing the kids so look they got this young lady this young minor at the peep show, all this other stuff, you can't say allegedly because they admitting to it, they copied it, they telling you everything. So you you know, you just believe what they say. We we gonna say we believe them now. They know better. They was there. Luke was there. Tell us what happened. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, she she would be better to, to answer that question than anybody. I remember there was a video you put out. And it had Gloria Velez and this other like light skinned chick, and Gloria was eating pussy in the video. Yeah, in Mexico. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so, so Gloria was was about that life. Of course she was, no doubt about it. I mean, at that period of time, yeah, she was. I don't know what the lady is doing right now, uh, but at that period, so. Hold on, Ninja. At that time, she was a kid. She was a kid. You got on there, carpet munching in Mexico, passing around to rappers in videos, dancing. When they come for you, when they come for you, Luke, because you next, you gonna deserve it because you bragging. And you know you're talking about a kid. Somebody's kid. I guess I didn't introduce her to nobody because uh, I didn't know her. <laughs> I figured out when I was too much video and too much footage of uh, of her uh, rolling with us. I guess I didn't introduce, introduce her to uh, Biggie Smalls. I didn't introduce her to Jay-Z. I didn't introduce her to Dame Dash. Nobody. So, so what happened between Jay-Z and Gloria Velez? Uh, nothing. He was looking for some girls in a video to use for a video. He said his, the girls uh, didn't look good. So 
I called her on the phone. She lived it in, in uh, West Palm Beach. And I called her and I said, hey, look, you know, uh, Jay needs some girls for some video. You got some girls and you come on down also. She ended up coming down doing the video. Whatever happened uh, in the trailer is you have to ask her. I don't know. All right. Well, on a sway video, you said that they were fucking. Hey, I don't know what happened in the uh, witch code. I think that's what happened. Okay. Now, what about you and Biggie? Because you had mentioned that you would you would have like orgies with Biggie and stuff like that, or you would put him in orgies. Oh, me and Biggie, man, me, me and Biggie was good friends. I mean, he did the song uh, when he did the song. Me and him did a song. He was, you know, bust a nut. Yeah, bust a nut. He talked about his fun on my boat, and I guess you can uh, go listen to the lyrics of that song, and it'll explain to you how much fun he had on my boat. <laughs> So uh, how many times did he go out on the boat with you? Oh, man, Big was my man. Big would come down to Miami, hang out with me. You know, uh, when I would go to New York, I would hang out with him. Okay, I'm going to let y'all hear the rest of this, but I want to interject. Everything that he just said is trafficking. It's trafficking. He just admitted to trafficking. He probably gonna he probably need to say allegedly when they come questioning about this. Because I'm not gonna say it because he's saying it. He's saying what he You know, I think I did one of his videos, one more chance uh video. Uh you know, I just me and me and Big was that was my guy, just like Pac. Pac was my guy as well. You know, uh, when I would see him on the road, uh he would we would bring him down to Miami, you know, I would see him. He was that was my guy. You know, and uh, all those guys were my guy. Okay, we're gonna let that sink in for a minute. We're gonna digest because you know we have a tendency, we wanna give these brothers the benefit of the doubt. But it looks like everything that they accuse them of, they actually did. Now, we gotta wrap our mind around that. They telling you what they did. He said he had a first. Aaron Hall got it. Then Jay Z, they passing around. That's what they say. That's what they're saying. You know, as far as my knowledge, it's allegedly I wasn't there. But from what they just said, and what these women are saying. seems to be the same thing they say the same thing that the women saying you know so in light of this uh revelation you got to go back and you got to realize that everything jaguar right was saying was true Natasha k keep pulling them up there getting a confessions is true because these guys just admitted to it well they ain't interviewed jay-z yet but you know what they say about him and Foxy Brown, and she, and she was a kid too. But uh, I mean, these idols and these people that be singing and you, you be clapping to their music, and it be diabolical. Cause at this point, their interviews on Vlad is worse than the drill rappers. You know what I mean? Cause they they talking to, they talking about. They situations with minors and trafficking and you know what I mean? And, and, and everything that's coming out. So, you know, this sad affair, but they, they deserve everything they get. Luke next, Aaron Hall on deck right now. And the more they drag the rest of them in and the more they tell and the more these videos come out, because Luke got all the videos. He proud of that. These guys are proud of what they did. And they my age. You know what I mean? You know, when we young, we make mistakes and we do things that we regret and we're remorseful about. 
because we know what we did was wrong. He's sitting up there and he's really offended that Aaron Hall said that Luke didn't introduce him to the kid. He adamant about it. Luke didn't introduce me to that kid. I found that kid and took her. What? Then he, well, I had her first and here, and then I flew her from California to here. And then I took her to Mexico and had her down there doing this, that, and other. Ninja ain't that trafficking. By definition. I know you're just as disgusted as I am. Sign that Detroit. Keep your head on swivel. Peace.